Hello YouTube and welcome to the Armor with me Blue and today we are going to go over a Reiner vs Kaio replay from Pro Tour LA once again and before jumping into the replay I want to talk a little bit about how the matchup uh, should maybe look like from the perspective of uh, each of the heroes so starting with Kaio, Kaio is a very aggressive deck that has a lot of value uh, into his ability and into the power of his cards such as Bear Fangs and Wild Ride and all of these generating additional uh, Might tokens which is a plus one offensive value in a way um, every time you play them. Uh, the downside with this is that a lot of these cards are zero blocks. Uh, meaning that defensively you suffer a lot. So in matchups like these and as as a whole with Kaio, I think you want to uh, trade uh, positive damage whenever you can, right? Like if you can block with two cards and then swing a um, bear fangs for eight plus a might, that's like nine value off of two cards, and you're getting very ahead whenever you can do this. Um, but whenever you're playing decks like the current Reiner that can utilize a lot of defense reactions in order to kind of match your offensive pressure defensively, uh, you want to try and go for these bigger turns where you have like one to three, one to two go again attacks plus maybe a blood rush bellow on top of them, and you want to try and resolve uh, as many. Uh, cast bones as you can because that's often what can put you over the top of the uh, other player uh, on top of the other player's defenses uh, from Reiner's side uh, and the way Reiner is played right now he kind of tries to abuse the fact that he can play defense reactions in his brute deck and he can play all three blocks because the current Reiner decks do not really need to play uh, discard random cards uh, effects very often the only one or like one of the only ones they play is going to be uh, Blood Rush Bellow and what you want to do with Reiner, uh, especially against the Kaio, is try and block him as much as you can and then just swing uh, your Mandible Claw or uh, just two card hands in order to try and trade with him and then whenever you get to the point where you can execute your Blood Rush Bellow turn, you go for that. And the benefit of Reiner's Blood Rush Bellow turns is that they are very, very hard to block because you often would intimidate your opponent for like two, three cards, meaning that even if they wanted to, they won't be able to block. Um, so yeah, let's let's get going uh, and start with the matchup. First, we see Caillou going first. I think as a Caillou, you almost always want to go first, even if uh, going second technically gives you a better tempo uh, the reason why you want to go first with Kaio I think is because you have uh, a bunch of cards that you can discard for agility which is going to come in handy a lot uh, when you're going you know in your second turn especially if you manage to keep a five card hand uh, you can kind of do the same when going second but it will go it's going to be just a four card hand in that situation uh, also going second it's kind of risky sometimes because you can just draw into a bunch of non-blocks and your opponents may decide to gamble for that and just attack you for a lot uh, and you just lose health turn one and also you have access to cards like cast bones that can be game winning on turn one uh, so yeah and we see him going for just uh, Wrecker Romp, the reason why he goes for Wrecker Romp is because he does not want to stay with that card in Arsenal, 
Uh, so he has like two uh, two other red cards, so he's just like, okay, I'm going to pitch Rekeron for Rekeron, discard whatever, I don't care, I just want to have a good card in my arsenal. Uh, and we see Pablo resolving uh, Reckless Swing uh, turn one on a singular attack, which is very, very good for Reiner, uh, because he's probably not going to have the time to uh, actually cycle back to this Reckless Swing, even if he decided to keep it and pitch it for something. Uh, and I mean, it doesn't really matter if you're going to do the two damage now or later, so just use it uh, whenever you can. Um, here we're going to see Papu throw in a CNC that kind of has to be blocked by um, KU because his card in Arsenal is his own CNC. And uh, here it's going to be a sequence of a lot of CNCs and send packings between the Caillou and the Reiner. But in these exact sequences, we will see how much value the one might off of uh, Caillou's ability can provide, right? Uh, because uh, this CNC is coming for seven and Pabu is kind of forced to use two equipments in order to block it. And one of those equipments obviously generates him might and he's going to use send his own send packing uh, into, into the Caillou. Caillou's going to go for like block two uh, together with the, um, the hands in order to generate might and send another CNC for seven. Um, and I mean, in these situations, both of them are just going to be sending CNCs for seven effectively. Uh, Reiner is kind of on a, on a lot more of a disadvantage, especially against the CNCs, because he actually does play defense reactions. Um, and also he's at a disadvantage because uh, the Kayo uh, started this war with a plus uh, one CNC, right? Uh, the first CNC uh, Pabu on Reiner Ascent was just for 6, and like everything else after that is for 7. And you notice that at the end of this uh, CNC war, let's say, uh, both of them will have no uh, gloves left, but Pablo is also going to have no uh, legs remaining, right? Because this is, I believe, the final CNC of that uh, CNC loop, in a way. Uh, and he will have to use his uh, legs again, uh, plus two cards. And uh, essentially all of that value uh, that Caillou gained was off of one might. And he essentially dealt three damage because of that, uh, because of that might to the, to the Reiner. Um, with that being said, uh, here we kind of see the the gameplay loop that I tried to describe uh, at the beginning of the match, where what Reiner cares about is slowly chipping Kyle down until he reaches a point where he can go for a big blood rush below turn, deal a lot of damage. And then hopefully be able to close the game out with another blood rush below term, or maybe some of his specializations where he's just going to intimidate a lot of cards from you and just deal like some amount of unblockable damage. Uh, and the rest of the time we'll see him just uh, blocking with his whole hand and just sending three. And that three that he sends, Kayo doesn't really have the option of blocking because we'll see a lot of the time he needs a big hand in order to try and represent a decent amount of damage. And we'll also see him a lot of times, despite keeping a big hand, still put something in Arsenal, which is also something Kayo wants to do in order to kind of uh give himself better chances of having like a more explosive and a better hand next turn right like if you if you blocked with a card this turn uh, which led you to having no arsenal uh it's going to be kind of worse if uh your arsenal is something like bear fangs that can potentially turn into nine go again if you just simply draw an agile wind up on your from your next hand and so on so he kind of has to 
keep these possibilities of having insane turns constantly for the price of uh, essentially three health uh, because of the mandible claw and here we see kind of an interesting uh, thing where he decides to not gamble uh, because like his last card in hand is bear fangs and he could have played the bear fangs here uh, instead of the runner runner hoping that he's going to draw and discard something that's not the runner runner effectively allowing him to have agility and next turn have a runner runner to extend his agility uh, but a very common theme that you will notice when we're watching uh, Alan Lau and other uh, very good Caillou players uh, and I mean brood players as a whole but especially Caillou is that they will just take a good value turn instead of trying to uh, gamble uh, for a very powerful turn right uh, they will only gamble if it's kind of like necessary uh, or it's like maybe positive value most of the time if you gamble uh, but overall kind of playing uh, reserved i feel like is uh, is very key for uh winning more consistently with ko um and here we see reiner yet again he blocked with a bunch of cards he's going to send in a uh mandible claw and he just puts a sink low in uh, arsenal and um being able to run to run sync blows and fades i feel like is very good for reiner uh because he once again he he does not really play these like bear fangs or like savage feasts or uh popings and so on uh he just wants to block a lot and then play like uh one of his specializations or like a blood repel turn here we're going to see Savage Feast. Savage Feast is one of your best cards uh, whenever you have go again for it. Um, whenever you have go again for it because it obviously just replaces itself for a singular resource. And here we're going to see a very interesting play from Pavu uh, where he looks at his hand, he has uh, one not non-6 too many, right? Because what you want to have in a Blood Rush Bellow turn, which we know he has, is you want to have like one card that is not a 6, which is most definitely, uh, more often than not going to be a blue that can play for the Blood Rush. Then you need the Blood Rush, and then you need like two 6s remaining in his hand. And he's going to just use the thing below here to try and fish for uh, a 6 power attack. Uh, because if he finds it, he's going to try and keep this hand in order to send a big uh, blood rush below turn into the KO. And if he does not find it, he's going to just continue blocking. Uh, and he does not find it here, he finds yet another non-attack action. Uh, so he's probably going to spend the rest of his hand blocking uh, during this turn. Uh, unfortunately for Ko, I believe he drew uh, another. Uh, he drew another uh, red card, and here once again, uh, as we were talking about Ko wanting to just extract as much offensive value as possible, we're going to see him just pitching the, all of those red cards uh, together with the tunic in order to be able to. Uh, use the bear fangs. Unfortunately, he discards cast bones here, and he's kind of punished uh but yeah like i mean he could have discarded uh he could have pitched one of these reds to play the other one um instead of going for uh bear fangs into claws uh but he didn't uh and he didn't because he wanted to push a lot of damage now in hindsight you can maybe argue that doing so was not that amazing especially if you get punished uh by cast bones but i mean you never play uh, i mean it's it's always unexpected right you can't factor in that uh your bear fangs is going to go only for six because if it was not only for six it would have uh 
push two more damage here, right? Which is what the Reiner wants. Uh, something that in hindsight may be a little bit of a mistake is uh, spending resources to attack with the claw because a lot of the times Reiner is just going to match that with a singular block from his hand, which he kind of wants to do anyway. And maybe we would have been able to save a tunic resource or um or a card in arsenal if we uh, did not swing with the claw uh, at the end of the day pabu is going to just keep the blood rush below in his hand and he's not going to attack at all uh, so had we not attacked with the claw we would have taken three more damage uh, and i mean at that point we kind of have to figure out if that's worth it uh, here we're going to send send packing for seven uh, which is coming in in a very interesting spot, especially when uh, Reiner is uh, out of uh, armor pieces effectively. His only remaining armor piece is the flashback, and the flashback you want to use on a Blood Rush Bellow turn from your opponent. Uh, we banish the Blood Rush Bellow with this card, which means that our opponent more or less has to uh, block with uh, three cards in order to protect himself against it and I believe at the end of the day that's exactly what uh, Pabu is going to do uh, he's going to block with 3 cards, keep a blood rush below and then I believe he, he pitches blood rush below in order to attack with the claws and, and pass um, but here we kind of see one of the Kaiyu downsides uh, we see a situation where the deck does not really flow that well, right? Uh, sand packing for 7 is amazing and this is very disruptive and the tempo is going to be uh, kept on his side. But we see that he effectively has like 2 cards remaining in his hand that he is probably not going to be able to use unless they discard for agility or something, which is going to be great. Uh, but in other circumstances, it's just... Uh, we are just going to just take 3 damage here in order to try and uh, represent a better turn maybe or we are going to just block with 3 right like whichever one of these it is uh, such a low power turn is just okay for Ryan right and here it tells him that you know maybe this turn also is not going to be that amazing and we see that it is not that amazing at all right the turn is just sending a uh, beast within that we had to arsenal last turn in order to uh, kind of empty our arsenal and now we're going to create agility but overall this was like two turns where the kayo did not really uh present the Reiner with like a lot of damage to block where damage is going to be leaking and so on and so on so now the Reiner has access to uh, a four card hand with blood rush below where he was not punished uh kind of at all right like he he only took two damage in order to keep this hand and that's exactly what Reiner wants to do here i believe they miss a massacre trigger because massacre when discarded randomly should uh, intimidate yet another card um but i guess that kind of doesn't matter seeing that um seeing that the Kayo has uh, a non-block in his hand. Um, here we're going to see the use of the flashback. Flashback is one of those cards that is uh, very, very skill testing, right? Uh, there are situations where you use flashback and all that it will do is just block two. And there are other situations where you use the flashback and it will block like five, six damage. Uh, or something like this and just be uh, more or less a game winning play in a situation and uh, kind of trying to figure out when to activate it for the best value is something that you have to learn with Kayo in, in two different matchups um, and right now I feel like it is a very good use of Kayo to go for the flashback here 
uh, because you know Rainer only has I believe three cards remaining in hand you know this is going to be one of his bigger turns you know that the majority of his turns are just going to be swing mandible claw anyway and here you're pretty happy with like almost every hit right if you hit another blue off of his hand you know that he's probably not going to have enough resources in order to send another mandible claw plus one more attack if you hit the an attack you know that you know maybe he's going to just send the mandible claw and not have an attack after um and you kind of don't need to wait for another moment right just uh use it as soon as possible because what your deck is realistically trying to do as kayo is pressure the reiner's health pool enough as to where he won't be able to just keep these blood rush bellow turns and uh, deal practically unblockable damage to you. Uh, as a Reiner on the other hand, uh, the usage of Scowling Flashback is uh, not as easy. Uh, it's not as easy because... Uh, I mean, not that, not that it's not as easy, but it's not as, uh, as clear, it's not the same uh, in that matchup. Because you do not really care, uh, you do not really care about uh, Caio's blood rush bellow turns or something like this that much, right? Because Caio's blood rush bellow turns are not that insane because he doesn't have like the second mandible claw. Um, what you realistically mostly care about with uh, Reiner is being able to save. Uh, your hand for a blood rush bellow turn so that means that you kind of want to use your flashback during a turn where you have your blood rush bellow combo and your opponent is uh, forcing you to block uh, or is maybe going to push lethal and that, that these are the situations where you kind of want to use the flashback to give yourself a bigger chance of being able to hold that blood rush bellow turn and just uh, destroy your opponent from there. Um, a little bit unfortunate um, result from the flashback of the Kaio here. Uh, I feel like the Kaio is relatively unlucky uh, during this game. Uh, I mean, his turn one was kind of bad, but it's an okay turn one. But uh, later on, uh, his flashback usage, he did not... Uh, he, he, he banished basically the best card uh, for Reiner he could, right? Because he just banished the Dig of Dinner, which was the second blue, and it's the blue he the and it's the blue that he has go again, which is like the best uh the, the best one he can just play from Arsenal. Um so yeah, like there's a there's a world where um where Caillou would have managed to uh banish the um, the swing big there and kind of save two additional damage during that turn um but oh well uh dig up dinner i kind of want to talk a little bit about dig up dinner because it's a card that i never thought I, it will see play uh but when i'm watching just the play patterns of this reiner deck which are mostly just block with everything and swing with like a singular card and a lot of the times it's just swing with mandible claw, arsenal, defense reactions, defense reaction or nash to, uh, or uh, something um, and uh, pass the turn until you find your blood rush bellow turns or uh, something like pump pump uh, specialization um, Dig up dinner kind of fits that curve, right? Because off of a blue, you can just play dig up dinner and attack with the mandible claw, and it fits your uh, blue cards, right? And it's just a blue card that can sometimes heal you three, uh, essentially in situations like these, right? Like if your opponent just sends something like uh, beast within uh, like the previous turn where effectively nothing happens and you uh, and you gotta uh, keep like two cards in hand uh, you can just spend them right with uh, 
dig up dinner and get something uh, in return. And here I believe he's going to uh, heal himself for three. Um, overall, the game right now is looking very uh, Reiner favored. Uh, it's like almost extremely Reiner favored, right? Like the difference is like 12 HP or something like this. And uh, Reiner has like barely threatened damage during that game outside of that Blood Rush Bellow turn. Here we're going to see a yellow wild ride. I'm not sure if yellow wild ride is something that chaos main deck, uh, but as we said, whenever your win condition is to try and um, pressure your opponent's hand and life total as fast as possible because they kind of have this blood rush bellow uh, combo -y kind of uh, win condition, uh, including it from the sideboard in order to help you have a bigger and more consistent pressure is definitely uh, something you can do and something that's going to just be very good. Uh, and here we see Reiner is just going to take 8 uh, but that means there's a Blood Rush Bellow turn coming, right? And um, that's, uh, that's not very good for Kaio. Um, in my opinion, if you're playing the Kaio, uh, you kind of want to try and block as much damage as possible during these Blood Rush Bellow turns uh, because they will intimidate you with for a bunch anyway and you will just end up uh, taking damage and like the rest of the game the Kai, the Reiner is just attacking for 3 so maybe that's the the best situation in which you can block and here we're going to see Intimidate from Reiner, Intimidate from Pact Hunt and um, him not blocking here means that either he has just an insane 5 card hand or that he was left with 0 blocks in hand which is once again why those 0 blocks can be an even bigger liability uh, in the Reiner matchup um, to be honest it seems very doomed here it seems very doomed here uh, but I feel like Kayo is going to somewhat close the gap uh, right now and Kayo is kind of very good at closing the gap. Uh, the discard uh, look from the Kayo has not been amazing because I, I believe this is like the second uh, probing that he has discarded and he drew into another Blood Rush Bellow and uh, another Blood Rush Bellow and a uh, cast bones which is kind of very bad uh, draw off of uh, blood rush bellow and if it was uh, not popping what he discarded maybe he would have uh, had a way better turn and be able to extend even even more um but yeah th this is this is kind of what kayu lives and dies by right like sometimes you just randomly discard your go again enablers and you'll be left with uh, relatively bad turns. But here, thankfully for Kaio, we see um, Reiner block with two cards on the Mandible Claw and here he's going to uh, block with another card, I believe, and just take seven. And Kaio is just going to generate agility, set the cast bombs and pass the turn. Um, and here we can kind of see uh, what uh, Kayu was trying to do for the entirety of the game, right? Uh, which is present uh, an amount of damage where the Reiner will uh, take a solid amount of damage even when blocking, right? Like he took 7 damage that turn in order to keep a card in hand and that card in hand is just the blue. Um, Pabu here rolls scabs in order to try and roll uh, two action points from the scabs in order to be able to pitch his blue card uh, together with the tunic for four resources in order to try and threaten Leto uh, onto uh, the Kayo. Uh, but that does not happen. 
And here we see he, he's going to decide to just arsenal it. Uh, because he knows the Caillou is just most likely going to keep his hand uh, anyway or just take 3 damage and it's not going to matter. And see, here we see a Bear Fangs uh, for 9 coming possibly with Go again, which is like very, very scary. Uh, he discards a... Um, he discards uh, a sand packing and here we see the use of the flashback and we see the use of the flashback here because he wants to save the rest of his hand right uh there was a blood rush bellow turn uh blood rush bellow activation uh, the previous turn uh, which could have resulted in like three attacks kind of easily and he did not utilize his uh, flashback there because he knew he's just going to block with the entirety of his hand anyway but now he wants to keep the rest of his hand so he's just going to use the flashback in order to do this uh, Kyo is going to just go for uh, like eight damage into three damage into uh, cast bones and he's just going to arsenal a card and shuffle the six cards right um what the kayo would have wanted here is maybe a hint from reiner that does not represent lethal and if we have to be honest uh the majority of kayo hands that we have seen up until now are exactly uh hands that do not represent lethal uh, and Caius hand next turn would most likely represent Leto, right? Like he has a tunic counter, he has like seven go again, he has a card in Arsenal as well. Um, so if he does not die this turn, uh, he is most likely winning the game. And, uh, and it's mostly because of cast bones. And this is... The first time uh, Kayo manages to resolve cast bones in this match and it comes a little bit too late uh, in the game because I believe Pablo is just going to uh, intimidate him for 3 here, he's just going barraging B down, barraging B down into show no mercy which also just intimidates a card and this show no mercy is coming in for like effectively 15 or something like this and it's just going to end the game there. Um, but once again, as I said, we, we we saw during that game that the majority of Reiner hands are not this lethal combination of cards. Uh, so if this hand was like a turn later, um, Kayo would have most definitely won this game. Uh, if the Kayo managed to set up a castle bones any time earlier during this game, he would have won the game also maybe right because cast bones is just such a huge amount of uh value and like damage push um that it's amazing um so yeah that's it see you guys next time